sit and dance? Yeah, my sit and dance. Okay, hi Hello. guys. Hello. Yes, what's happening Welcome here? Welcome <laughs> to the show today. We are going to be having a great show today. It is Wednesday, January 20th, and we are coming to you live talking about real estate. So here we are. I'm Lisa. I'm Gary. Welcome. Thanks for watching. What do you have on board today? Today, we are going to talk about the five reasons that you people sell their house. Yes. Isn't that great? 2021, five top reasons to sell your home. That's right. Okay, Get so. Get my people up here so I can see your comments. Do you want to start? You want me to start? Have Go ahead. You start. Go ahead. Number one reason, without looking at my notes, lifestyle. Lifestyle. So have you been impacted? Uh, we have so many people that they have had the opportunity through COVID to reevaluate their needs. So whether you are moving up or moving down, you're working at home now, you are homeschooling kids at home, your parents are moving in with you, um, or you need more room, or you don't, you're not going to commute anymore, or you decided you want to live at the beach, or you have a dream of some place you've always wanted to live and feel like now's the time, now or never, to move on. Um, the number one reason people move, lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, lifestyle can take a lot of different forms. Lifestyle can say, hey, I need an extra bedroom for an office, I need an extra bedroom for a child that's on the way, I need one less extra bedroom for a child that's going to college. Could mm -hmm. that be? Yeah. I, there's a lot of different reasons. I want to do one disclaimer real quick. We would never, ever advocate to be out of the real estate market, right? I mean, right. so even though we're talking about the five top reasons to sell, we're not talking about to exit the real estate market. We're talking about selling and buying something different, correct? Right, in our current market. <laughs> the current things that are happening in the market now. <laughs> so, get us on the same page here. Yes. Oh, okay. There it is. Same page. Uh-huh. <laughs> so the, the first question to ask yourself if you're thinking about sell, uh, selling your home is where are you going to go? What's the plan? It's the number one thing we always ask our sellers is where are you going? What's the plan? Because that's really what we're going to work backwards from is your plan on where you're going. Yeah, there's a lot of different reasons to sell. Uh, number one lifestyle of course and we're not advocating to sell your house and move into a rental we're saying possibly rent your house and move into a rental so you can buy another house and get owner occupant financing which is advantageous to investment financing and then building your portfolio portfolio that way we worked to that number yet oh whoops did i, did I jump ahead <laughs> so he uh is moving right ahead here on the notes but the the number uh two re reason we have of our five reasons to sell your home right now is uh it's a seller's market and boy is it smoking hot absolutely every offer we write we're not the only person writing on that for our buyers there's all multiple offers on every single property Right, the, what makes the seller's market more buyers in the market than sellers. So every property that comes on the market, you have multiple buyers in, looking at that property. So it really gives you the opportunity to be in the driver's seat um, a little more in a seller's market as the seller. So that's always a good place to be in is the driver's seat. <laughs> yes, it's easily... It's easy to get discouraged as a buyer because you write an offer and then there's nine other offers and they accept one offer. And if it's not your offer, there's nine people walk away very disappointed that they didn't get that property. Because they went to a lot of trouble. They got approved with the lender. That's our number one thing to do mm -hmm. as a buyer. They've done all the paperwork. We've written a 37 page to 40 page contract. We've got it all laid out and so did the other nine people. So all the people that went to all the trouble and are excited and found the perfect home on a 10 offer situation, nine people walk away very disappointed that they didn't get their dream home. Right. Now what have you discovered when somebody doesn't get their dream home? They're very sad. <laughs> yes, but guess what? We always find them a better property. Right, that it is. always works out that way. If you're a buyer in this market and you're discouraged, just hang in there because even though you have your heart set on maybe the third property you wrote an offer on, 
the one you ultimately end up bu uh, buying is always the best one. It always checks all your boxes the best and um, just trust me, we've been doing this for a long time and that's just the way it always works out is the one that ultimately ends up being yours is the one that was right for you all along. Yeah, and it's nice when they finally do get a home that they like and they get their offer accepted and go ahead and close it. They go, oh my gosh, I'm so glad we didn't get that first or second house right. because this one fits our needs so much better. Right, that is so true every time. Uh, so another thing about this market is there's equity in this market. Um, the sellers have equity. Prices have gone up so much and so fast that if you're thinking about cashing out your uh, equity, it's a great time because um, all the sellers we know have more sometimes equity they're cashing out than they ever thought they'd have. <laughs> oh, I know. Like the, one of the statistics shows we did uh, at the beginning of the month it was up 20% year over year. So that's a lot of it. That's a lot. <laughs> I want to read this right. I have a statistic here about in September, one in five houses sold over the asking price. Over the asking price. Oh. And that's 50% more than the long-term norms. The fourth quarter had the largest monthly price, gain, price gains going back to 1996. And the inventory has declined every week starting in June of last year. So that's just like the perfect storm there in seller's market. Um, but that's just amazing. Mm -hmm. We had uh, the statistics show he was saying that the sold properties, they sold at over 100% was the average on the sales price for the that's first time. Yeah, it's crazy. Yes, that's crazy. So the number three reason that people sell their house, price. Premium price you're getting right now. Uh, based on the demand and the market moves, and like we just said, uh, it has just been amazing prices that people getting really based on basic economic supply and demand curve. Yeah, price is important. I mean, nobody wants to sell their house at a loss. Nobody wants to take the low market value for their house. So when you're getting a premium price, that means you're getting every penny that the market allows for your house as a seller. And now's the time to do that. When it's slower markets or buyer's markets, you're not always sure. You know, you get an offer, a low ball offer, and you say, wow. Is that all there is? Now when you've got multiple offers on your property, you know you're getting very top of the market pricing. Yeah, the only way to know if you're getting market price for your home is to put it on the open market. It's the only way to uh, hire us, we'll get it on the market, out with the most eyeballs to, to see it, is the only way you know what market value is, is if you put it out there and get the offers and look at them. Because um, sometimes when you get the offers, we've had situations where we've gotten multiple offers for our sellers and the prices are similar, a couple of them are similar, a couple of them high, a couple of them low, but then you have, they generally block into kind of the same bracket so that you know, okay, the buyers feel like market value for my house is in this bracket of, of pricing is normally how they come in. There's always the outliers, but... Um, that's the only way to really know what true market value is on your home is to put it on the market. It is. And like Lisa was saying, several of the offers come in almost identically uh -huh. priced. Yep. The only thing different between the offers are the terms. So that's when we have to sift through the terms and get the right terms that are correct for the seller. So when the buyer and seller meet, happy day for everybody. That's right. The Ventura County's average sold price uh, last year went up 12%. So the average sold price is almost eight hundred thousand now to seven ninety seven four fifty, um, and then I wanted to make a note here on the over a million dollars. The way our statistics get measured is um, the whole market, and then they carve out the over a million dollar luxury market, and the numbers were amazing. So I just wanted to note that that the sold listings over a million dollars in Ventura County were up forty four percent last year. I mean that's crazy, right? And then just to top that, the total dollar volume sold over a million dollars in Ventura County was up 48%. I mean, these numbers are just amazing. So people are definitely moving uh, uh, during 2020. You know, we're also in the luxury division for Berkshire Hathaway. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't too many years ago when it was a million dollar sale or over, it was in the luxury part. Now that price point
point has moved up considerably. Yeah, almost two million. I think we're at a million seven in our market because it changes. If you're in Beverly Hills or Santa Barbara or La Jolla, um, the luxury market, what they deem it is a different number. Um, so keep on my notes here. Keep on track. Uh, another thing I thought was cool was that uh, the good weather, there was this really cool chart that showed good, wet, good weather and pricing. And here in Southern California, of course, we have amazing weather and high prices to go with the weather. But I thought, um, just to tap on the nation here, that in California, there are 300 nice days a year, just to give you a benchmark of those of us here in Southern California. Well, and I know the Chamber of Commerce statistic for Ventura County, and we have 320 plus days of good weather. Yes, every so year. that's why this is such an amazing place to live. And then I pulled, I've just pulled out a couple more just for comparison. Oklahoma City has 106 nice days a year. Now, it didn't tell you what they deemed nice days, but that's what they deemed them. The median price for a home there is 148000 And then Jacksonville, Florida, 139 days of nice weather there. Um, average price, 214000 And then they had McAllen, Texas, 98 nice days, and a median price of 107000 Now, McAllen... Texas is way down by the border, um, almost in the tip of the bottom of Texas, but that's the stat that was on these stats. So I just thought that was interesting, and I thought, well, for Oklahoma City, uh, City, it could be rain and snow and humidity, I don't know what they count, but McAllen, Texas, 98 nice days to me, means it rains a lot there, like in Houston. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> well, same with Jacksonville. Yes, I would think, you, you know, I, based on those statistics, I would think we all know what a nice day is. You kind of wake up and go, man, this is a nice day, or, you know, today's not so nice, but you make the best out of whatever day they give you. But I That's think, right. you know, a nice day is a nice day, no matter where you're at, whether you're in Oklahoma City or whether you're in Ventura County. That's right. Um, so another, the fourth, re we'll move on to number four. The oh. fourth re uh, reason to sell your home now is the low interest rates. I mean, the buyers are just getting amazing rates. Rates are under 3%, which is just mind-blowing. They are record low mortgage rates, which is helping to create the demand in the market because now some buyers can afford to buy a home instead of rent um, because the interest rates are so low. But what they're finding is stiff competition. Yes, and I would think, you know, not only low interest rates for the buyers, but if you do sell your home, we highly recommend you buy another home, so yep. low interest rates for you too. So that, that works both ways. Yep. And then the uh, chief economist for National Association of Realtors, Lawrence Young, said these historically, historically low rates will continue through the rest of 2021. Right. Um, another thing I thought was interesting was applications for home purchase loans were up 26% in the middle of December. Now, normally in the middle of December, people are gearing up for the holidays, and it's not necessarily a super busy time to list or buy a home. But this year, more these are not refinances. These are purchase mortgage applications up 26%. I thought that was quite a, st a statistic, which is why our holidays were so bu busy. <laughs> busy, yes. busy. Busy December. Yes. Well, I wonder how far up, I don't, I don't know if you know the answer to this question or not, that refinance mortgages are up. They've got to be just through the roof. Yeah, the statistic wasn't there, but one of the things they said about that was people are refinancing to get a lower payment, of course, um, but also to pull cash out to do the honeydew remodel projects they've been wanting to do because now they've been in their home more than they ever thought in 2020 and looking around at all the home projects that they need to do or want to do. <laughs> so they're refinancing to get the cash out at these low rates to do those update projects that they have been looking at for the past year. Um, and if you need any help deciding what you should or shouldn't do for home value down the road, give us a call. We'd be happy to, to talk about that. We ended up doing an unexpected full remodel on a property we owned during COVID. It was just another challenging full-time job to add to the list. Um, but happy to report it is done. It turned out beautiful and the tenants are moving in. So that turned out great. Oh yeah, one year lease on that. So yeah, we got wonderful above and beyond what we thought we were going to do. We were going to paint carpet, go in, get out, done deal, put it back on the rental market. However, we discovered some disturbing news in the kitchen that ended up being 
Well, not really news. It was just time. There was really <laughs> nothing that was like that outlandish. It was just time. So we ended up, anyway, it was a big project, and now it's all done. Yes, it is. So now there's a couple of wild cards that could shake up uh, the steaming hot uh, real estate market, especially here in Southern California at the beach. Because, uh, you know, Ventura, we are between Santa Barbara and Malibu. So highly desirable, perfect weather. You say 320 days a year. Um, but COVID is still a wild card. What could and couldn't happen, how fast they get the vaccines rolled out, um, and just what's happening. If we're having a surge, I guess, in California. I don't know if we're really having a surge or we just have a higher population, so the numbers look uh, higher. I don't know. But um, COVID and how they're going to handle that and how it's going to roll out and all that is still kind of an unknown. Um, other states are back to work. They are not shut down as much as we are here. So the economy is roaring back in the places that are open. Yeah, we expect our economy to roar back as soon as we get open. Yep. As soon as the vaccine rolls out, people get back into school. Yep. Every restaurant's open, nail salons, hair salons. There's a lot of different industries that are just disseminated. Right, we're right so sad to hear another uh, Ventura family favorite Ferraro's restaurants. Um, closing indefinitely is what they said. So we are sorry to see you guys go. And I think um, the sad thing is that in every town across America, these family restaurants, they've been in business over 50 years, um, and they are going out of business based on these continued lockdowns in California. So um, our thoughts and feelings go out to you and every other business that's struggling in the nation due to all this. We're going to have to have Guy Fietti do some extra overtime to get around to all the mom and pop restaurants uh -huh. that are struggling and let's get them on diners, drive-ins and dives. Yeah, for sure. Go out, <laughs> please. I mean, go out, dine out, pick up, you know, whatever you're allowed to do in your state. Uh, but please support these small businesses that are just hanging on by a thread. And I know we have Done our fair share during COVID. I finally got on the scale. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> oh, yes. <yeah>, so <laughs> Not to mention the cooking show that we did to stay in front of our clients. We've done a cooking show, did 100 episodes in 2020. So we love that, to stay in front of our people, stay in front of our clients. And it was really a fun way to do that. Yeah, just a quick side note on that. Uh -huh. It was, what, March 17th, and Lisa said, hey, grab your phone. I'm going to walk over here. You were making corned beef and cabbage. Yeah, it was St. Patrick's Day. Yes, and she said, grab your phone. Let's go live on this right now, and we did. So if you're looking at our YouTube channel, and there's some cooking shows on there, it's more of an opportunity to get to know us and to stay in front of you guys. So they're yeah. still there, all it, 100 episodes. It was really, really fun and loved it. I mean, but we did 100. It was awesome. So any kinds of fun things you want to learn how to make, we made a lot of them. That's <laughs> because uh, Lisa's an excellent. I mean, excellent is probably not the correct personification of what she does in the kitchen, but unbelievable the amount of food that she made and the amount of good food that we ate. Oh, my over gosh. Eight. So, oh, yeah, it was fun. I'm, wor I'm working on a Valentine's Day show, so stay tuned for your romantic Valentine's dinner that you're probably having at home if you're here in California. <laughs> and then the other wild card besides COVID for the coming year is potentially a double dip recession. So that's what they're talking about. Um, as the U.S. continues its K-shaped recovery, the gap is widening. So between those that have had steady jobs all through this and those that haven't. So um, it could affect consumer spending. Uh, and then in the long term, it'll impact the housing market as the would-be buyers may disappear from the market depending on their jobs. Yeah, it's essential workers versus non-essential workers, kind of, you know, because it's been, it's a moving target. It's moved over here, moved over there. It has kind of moved all around. And then I, I thought this was another cool thing about selling your home is Zillow did a survey of home owners that are considering selling in the next three years. And the Top two reasons that people are holding off on selling right now, 34% said that life is uncertain right now, and then 31% financial uncertainty uh, is keeping them from selling their home right now. So if you want to talk about either one of those things, if you're thinking about selling and moving for any one of those lifestyle reasons that we mentioned, um, but you just don't know and you want to uh, have a real estate conversation, we'd love to have one because that's what we do. That's what we talk about. We study real estate um, homes and prices and statistics and what's happening every day. So um, please use us. We want to be of service, so give us a call. Excellent. Now, we didn't get to number five yet. 
We did. Oh, you're right. I skipped you, right you through to the wild cards. Yes, yeah, huh? We didn't get to Sorry about five. that. Yes, skipped so right through to my wild cards. <laughs> okay, number five. Go ahead. Diversify. And what we mean by that is let's say you've got a lot of equity in your house, you're going to have a big house, and then maybe you want to downsize, sell, buy a smaller house, stay in the market, of course, and maybe add a fourplex to your portfolio or a duplex, or maybe just another single family house as a rental house. Maybe sell your house and downsize and buy a second home. That's always exciting to do. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what we mean. So that was number five. Is that yes. what you had for number five? That's what I had. The suburbs are shining because people can work from home now. That people, uh, when they could work from home, fled out of the cities. And they're liking being in the, in the suburbs and having a, a little more room. Um, and I just talked about the two wild cards, COVID and the recession, uh, possible rece recession. And then I read an article, I will link it here, um, from U-Haul does a survey every year, and I always love to see it when they put it out about where the U-Haul trucks went. Because if you tried to run a U-Haul truck in our area here in the last year, you have found out it is very challenging. They are gone. They are gone, and they're very expensive if you're leaving California. If you want to move to California, great. Give us a call. You'll get a great deal on your U-Haul truck because yes. they need them here. Um, but the number one, if you guys want to guess, what's the number one state that people move to, according to U-Haul, where their trucks went in 2020? I'll give you guys a second um, to guess on that that are watching live. And then I'll let you know, I'll skip ahead here to guess what state was number 50 on the list of people moving. Yes. What was it? California. California is, a, is number, oh, number 50, 50, where people are moving from. They are moving from California. <laughs> And the number one state that they are moving to in 2020. No kidding, California was number 50. 50. Tennessee. Tennessee surpassed the last from 2016 to 2019. Florida and Texas have been the uh, number one states that people have moved to, not just from California, but nationally, according to you all. Uh, but this year, in 2020 or last year, Tennessee uh, surpassed that. So number two is Texas, number three is Florida, number four is Ohio, number five Arizona, number six Colorado, seven Missouri, eight Nevada, nine North Carolina, ten is Georgia, eleven Arkansas, twelve Indiana, thirteen Wisconsin, fourteen Oklahoma, where Gary is from, and fifteen South Carolina. So those were the top fifteen states and I'll link the article because um, I just think it's always fun to see where people are moving, especially when a new state moved up the list. That's absolutely. I would think people moving to Tennessee or moving to Nashville would have to be the number they one. They were listed there. They were. It was Knoxville and some other cities I'd never heard of, so maybe they're suburbs of Nashville. But number one was Knoxville, so I don't well, know. Well, Knox, Knoxville's not a suburb of no. Nashville. But, no. Uh, but the other city cities might have been if I knew my Nashville suburbs better. <laughs> well, that's a big So Jed Clampett of the Beverly Hillbillies, wasn't he from Tennessee? I don't know. How, <laughs> don't know. how does that song go? <laughs> You'll have to, have to sing the ballad. <laughs> oh my good, 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 goodness. So people, we've heard some people in the market talking about foreclosure, that, you know, the coming later in this year will be foreclosures from people who have um, lost their jobs or lost their businesses. And uh, we just don't see it being a foreclosure market like it was during the bust of 2009 and 10 because people have equity. You know, people might be you know behind on their payments, but they still have equity in their home based on the fact that home prices have gone up so much. So we just don't see uh, here in our market the foreclosure issue really being a big deal because uh, people can still sell their homes. Uh, for market value and walk away with money, which was not the case in, dur during the downturn. Yes, as the market was going down. And mm -hmm. if you're behind on your payments right now, I would say because you've been unemployed or the business you right. work for is closed or gone and just right. hadn't happened. Right, So, but, but it's not going to be like it was be, be, before. People are like, oh, there's going to be a housing crash. and Well, we just don't see that in our market because the properties that come on the market uh, are selling, you know, right away with equity. And the loans seem to be different these days. If you've applied for a loan, a real estate loan lately, oh my gosh, they want everything that you've got, every check stub, every tax return. Uh -huh. it, they, they cover all their basis on that. And it just seems like 
the 2009 housing crisis was, I remember the old saying, if you could fog a mirror, you could get a loan. Not the case these days. No, 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 no. So that lead brings us to our question of the day. Yes. What is our question of the day today? Uh, now this is hermetically sealed. And <laughs> I'm the one that comes up with the question of the day. So Lisa. Based on our DM. <laughs> so if you have a question of the day that you want us to answer here on the show, uh, please DM us or uh, text us your question of the day. And uh, we may give you a prize if we use your question on question of the day. <laughs> yes. Okay. So. So let's see. Lisa's question of the day, or I guess it's my question of the day for Lisa. It's Let's our see. customer's question of the customers day that we're answering. Day. Yes, okay. When is the best time to sell real estate? Good question. Uh, when is the best time to sell real estate? Well, it's like you said earlier. It's when you have a plan. You don't just wake up one day and say, gosh, I'll sell the house and bank our equity. No, that's, <laughs> that's not a good plan. It'd be like, hey, let's, let's sell all our stocks because I think the stock market's going to crash tomorrow. Never a good time to be out of the stock market completely. Never, ever a good time to be out of the real estate market. So that's my answer to that, is when you have a plan. What is, what is that's your answer? Right. That's it. You know, our, mo our motto is don't wait to buy real estate. Buy, buy real, real estate, estate and, and wait. wait. Yes, absolutely. So, so we live by that one. So if you have any questions you want us to answer here on Question of the Day, um, we love uh, answering them and being of service. If you know anyone thinking about buying or selling or investing in real estate here in Ventura County or anywhere around the world, we have an amazing network with Berkshire Hathaway, and we love to put it to work for you. So you can always visit us at GaryAndLisa.com. Your real estate edge. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.